Today, we're setting the record straight about tankless water heaters. I'm debunking things that I hear all the time, myths and questions I get about tankless water heaters and will they work or won't they work? We're gonna jump in and I'm gonna give you my top three things that I hear all the time that are completely wrong. And if you stay till the end, I'm gonna show you the greatest product that makes tankless water heaters even better than your tank water heater. So first of all, this video is sponsored by Renai. Now to me, Renai is one of the tankless water heater leaders. That's why we teamed up with them because of not just the product that they put out, but the information they put out to help plumbers. As you see, I've got a tankless water heater installed on the wall right here behind me. Now, it's just hung there so you can see it. It's not hooked up, and I don't recommend you hanging a tankless water heater in your studio. The most popular question I get is, do tankless water heaters work with cold groundwater? Now think about it, I'm down in Texas. We get about 70 degree groundwater all year long. But you move up to Canada, someplace crazy like that, well maybe they've got 40 degree groundwater, you know, just above freezing. Well let me tell you what, the people at Renai have set it up. They've got a system and you can look in their book, it shows you the curve. Now, as a plumber, we may not understand that, but let me tell you, it's set up really easy where you can look at how many GPMs are you trying to get, what is your inlet temperature, and it can show you exactly what you can do. Now this is a good thing to be able to communicate with your customer, let me tell you why. I actually went to a rich doctor's house here in Dallas one day, and he was not getting enough hot water. Well, he had his water heater turned all the way up to 140. Now we have 70 degree inlet water, that's not too bad. The thing is, he was trying to get 140 out. It had to slow it down quite a bit. Find out what your needs are. You can actually get five GPM from a 40 degree inlet groundwater. Let me tell you what, that's enough to take three showers at a time. Now, I've got a 50 gallon water heater at home. If I try to take three showers at a time, well, number one, I'm gonna be running around the house a lot, but three showers running at the same time is gonna empty my water heater in just a few minutes. Three showers at the same time with five GPM flow, and there's a neat little formula that basically says whatever your GPMs are on your shower head, 70% of that is hot water. Learn how to figure that out, that's gonna help you in the long run. But putting all this together, three showers, five GPMs with 120 degree water set at the tankless, that ruins that myth right there. Cold groundwater, not able to use a tankless? I don't think so. And if it wouldn't work with cold groundwater, why would Canadians be buying 100,000 units a year? I mean, think about it, people come on, it works up there, we can work it anywhere in the United States. Myth number two, another question I get a lot. When I put in a tankless, is the venting gonna cost as much as the tankless? Well, the answer is no. Is it more expensive? I'm fixing to bust that one too. Here's the deal, when tankless water heaters first came out, they put out so much heat, there was a stainless steel vent, and it was quite expensive. It deterred a lot of plumbers and a lot of homeowners away from tankless. But now, due to the right technology, you can use two inch or three inch PVC, and that will get the job done. Now, compare that price. Two inch PVC to three or four inch stainless steel, a lot of it that had to be custom made. The venting is not a very expensive part of it. So don't let the fact that you have an old type B vent or maybe an old asbestos vent in your house be the reason you don't do it. If you've got a new water heater, guess what? You probably want a new vent in there anyway, and being able to run it out of PVC, having that option makes it an affordable price for anybody that wants a tankless water heater. So if you're installing a condensing water heater, think about it, two inch PVC, this'll work. Now the neat thing is, they also have a concentric vent Pop inside a pipe. This is great if you're just going through one hole. So say you're coming up on an exterior wall, instead of going up through the roof, you wanna turn and go through it, that's a great way to do it. The next question I get, yes, myth number three. Does low gas pressure mean I can't have a tankless water heater? The answer is no. Now don't get me wrong, you wanna make sure that your plumber checks the local gas code and knows exactly how much flow there needs to be, how much pressure there needs to be. It may need to be a new size meter, which guess what? The gas purveyor will provide to you for free because they want to make more money, but the plumber also needs to make sure to do a gas load calculation chart to make sure he's following everything by code like it should be. 
So let's step back here and open this tankless water heater up because I want to show you the inside and show you what Renai's done to make it better for you as the homeowner. So first of all, let's take the cover off. But wait, there's no screws. Okay, this is actually pretty cool. I like the way they've got it hid right there where you can just pop out your four screws and undo the cover. Now, we've still got it plugged in, so I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it so I can reach in here and show you some things. But as you can see, you can actually remove this cover, see what's going on, look at all your switches, look at everything without having to fight this thing. That came off pretty easy. The folks over at Renai have come up with a system that actually draws the gas in. The good thing about that is, you don't have to have as high pressure as maybe you do with other brands or anything like that. And you may not have to increase the size of the line to your house. A customer definitely wanted a tankless water heater, but their gas line was so small, they could not get enough pressure and enough flow there. So we had to increase the size of the meter and the size of the line. But here's the thing, they wanted it. They said, Roger, we understand the value, the ROI of going a tankless water heater. I was happy to do the work from, and they love it till today. So what I tell you is, due to the Venturi, the fan, everything in here, if your pressure is not as quite as high as it should be, if it's high enough, this tankless will work, where some other ones will not. So make sure you check the code book and you know what's required. That way, it is as high as it needs to be. So now one of my favorite things about this, and this is what makes this tankless water heater stand apart, a thermal crossover valve. If you go to say the master bedroom, whatever the furthest outlet is, put this on under the lavatory to where this controls your circulation. You come in here, you flip the right switches and it'll tell you how to do it in the guide. Flip the right switches, you can actually put in a circulation system at the same time you install this, it's part of it. The thermal bypass valve is what makes this possible. You are not just giving them a tankless water heater, you're not just giving them pretty much unlimited hot water, but you're giving it to them where they need it, when they need it. Now to me, that makes this well worth the investment. Now, if you're a plumber or if you're a homeowner and you've tried different water heaters in the past, what kind of problems did you have issues that I address today that lets people know that's really not a problem and tankless water heaters are worth the investment. So three myths about tankless water heater that aren't true. There's a lot of reasons out there to get a tankless water heater. To be honest, there's not any reasons not to. You just gotta figure out, do you really wanna save money in the long run or not? I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, helping you make more money in the trades.